Kiara. This is 5-Minute Global News and English Listening Practice Series. Episode 50. English Pronunciation and Traditional Chinese Translation Included. What designers can do to make textiles healthier for people and the planet. Original by Vanessa Martirossian, November 15, 2023, The Conversation. The textile industry's pollution is well documented, but its health impacts are often overlooked. The use of petrochemical compounds in clothing manufacturing poses risks to workers, nearby communities, and consumers. This global issue is compounded by our low, chronic exposure to a mix of synthetic substances, making it challenging to trace direct cause and effect relationships. Many of these substances become toxic through interaction or degradation, with azo dyes being a prevalent example. Sustainable textile design research, which I am involved in, focuses on eco-friendly industry practices, aiming to raise ecological awareness among designers, decision makers, and the public. Historically, the intersection of design, biology, and green chemistry has been pivotal in developing ecological textiles. These efforts align with the Hanover principles and the cradle-to-cradle eco-design philosophy, promoting circular design and eliminating toxic inputs. Biomimicry, inspired by nature's designs, offers potential solutions like non-toxic, room-temperature dye production. The concept of ecological literacy, introduced in the 1990s, emphasizes the interconnectedness of human activities with ecological systems. This approach broadens our understanding of sustainability, integrating social, political, and economic perspectives to address environmental challenges systemically. We're burning too much fossil fuel to fix by planting trees, making net zero emissions impossible with offsets. Original by Mike Joy, November 16, 2023, The Conversation. The concept of offsetting carbon emissions with reduction initiatives elsewhere, central to global climate change responses, needs critical examination. This strategy, including the net zero emissions goal, assumes that current carbon cycle activities can mitigate carbon released from fossil fuels, a belief that has been integral since the Kyoto Protocol. New Zealand's emissions trading scheme and its climate response revolve around this idea. However, the feasibility of this approach remains questionable. Annually, about 10 billion tons of carbon emissions from fossil fuels are released, potentially amounting to 280 billion tons by 2050. This significantly surpasses the maximum estimated biological carbon sequestration capacity of 38 billion tons, emphasizing the imbalance in the carbon cycle. The fossil carbon released today is additional to the existing carbon cycle, and current biological sequestration methods can only mitigate carbon within this cycle, not the surplus fossil carbon. Consequently, planting trees only replaces carbon lost from other trees, not from fossil fuels. Relying on forests for carbon sequestration also involves risks like wildfires and limits land use for other vital purposes. Furthermore, the concept of net zero emissions is misleading, as it overlooks the fact that every tree planted is merely replacing a pre-existing one, resulting in no actual balance of fossil emissions. Technological carbon capture and storage methods are costly, energy-intensive, and have limited success. Fundamental economic and social changes are required for a true net zero equilibrium, highlighting the need for a comprehensive approach to address climate change effectively. Shadow over Apex Summit lifts, rivals US and China restore some balance. Original by Giles Beckford, November 16, 2023, Radio New Zealand. The Apex Summit in San Francisco witnessed a significant thaw in US-China relations as leaders Joe Biden and Xi Jinping engaged in a four-hour retreat to improve communication and cooperation. Their discussions, described as constructive and productive by Biden, led to agreements on resuming military communication, combating synthetic opioid production, and addressing risks in artificial intelligence. Biden emphasized the restored direct and open communication, 
allowing both leaders immediate access to each other via direct phone calls. Despite these positive steps, differences remain on key issues such as U.S. support for Taiwan, trade tariffs, and the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The outcome of the U.S.-China talks had broader implications for the APEC summit, which often struggles with reaching non-binding consensus agreements. An official noted that while the U.S.-China dialogue added positivity, it couldn't entirely overshadow existing tensions within APEC. The summit, heavily secured against diverse protesting groups, proceeded without major incidents, although two New Zealanders were involved in minor altercations. New Zealand's representation, led by outgoing Trade Minister Damien O'Connor in the absence of the Prime Minister, focused on discussions regarding the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership CPTPP, aiming to revitalize the deal and consider new members like Ukraine, China, and Taiwan. The conclusion of APEC's final statement, however, remains uncertain, particularly with the Gaza conflict and the Ukraine war influencing the discourse and potentially impacting the summit's outcomes. We are really grateful that you took the time to listen. If you find value in this video, please consider sharing, liking, and subscribing. Also, do not forget to turn on the notification bell. A wonderful day to you all.